All right, going to do a video exposing some more blasphemous marrying idolatry in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Just showing the fact that Roman Catholics do in fact worship Mary, they've turned her basically into a de facto goddess. And proof of that is the fact that the Catholic Catechism literally says that uh, Mary, basically the church is holy in Mary. Not, not Jesus Christ, but Mary. Okay, listen to this. This is in paragraph number 867. It says, The church is holy. The holy, the most holy God and her author, Christ, her bridegroom, gave himself up to make her holy. The spirit of holiness gives her life. Since she still includes sinners, she is the sinless one made up of sinners. Holiness, Her holiness shines in the saints. In Mary, she is already all holy. Notice that. In Mary, she is already all holy. Um, so wait a second. Uh, Jesus Christ, you know, it talks about Christ as the bridegroom, you know, Christ gave himself up to make her holy, but then in Mary, she's holy. Bit of a contradiction there, is it? And, and she, in the context there, is obviously referring to the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, this is blasphemy, okay? Mary doesn't make you holy. But according to the Catholic ancient goddess worship, apparently she does. Uh, this, the saint is holy through Christ, plain and simple. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and keep you from evil. It's not Mary, it's the Lord who keeps you from evil. The Lord Jesus Christ there. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, it's the Lord delivering you from every evil work, and preserving you to his heavenly kingdom. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, it's God who's sanctifying you. First uh, Thessalonians chapter three, verse thirteen. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Not good at reading on a computer, do apologize. But notice that. Who is establishing your hearts unblameable in holiness? It's the Lord, not Mary. Okay? Mary was still a sinner herself. She had to have a savior. Luke chapter 1, verse I believe it's 46 and 47 talks about that. And also in John chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, uh, Mary actually made a mistake and sinned, and Jesus Christ had the corrector. Okay. Uh, Mary was obviously a, a great woman. She was a great servant of God. She was greatly used by God. Uh, she was, I, I, you know, she's greatly rewarded in heaven. I do believe so. But she was not some kind of queen of heaven or the mother of God. And she certainly, she certainly, she certainly does not give you salvation like the catechism states. And she does not make you holy. It's, it's Jesus Christ who sanctifies you and washes you. Talks about that in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. You're washed and sanctified, but he's washing you through his blood. It's Jesus Christ, not Mary who does it. But more proof that Roman Catholicism is just heathen. This is the ancient mother goddess worship condemned in Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 17 down to verse 25. Plain and simple. So don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism and his blasphemous Marian idolatry. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.